I get asked this question so many times. Daniel, what camera are you using for taking your reviews? Simple, it was the Canon EOS 5D Mark II. Why it was? Because four years ago I got the 5D Mark III. But then I saw the gap between those two cameras were so small. So I returned to the 5D Mark II. And now I'm really happy to introduce Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. From now on, many of my videos will be taken in 4K. I don't, I don't know if you really need 4K. If I need 4K, I don't know, we will figure out in a bit. We'll be now shooting the entire review on the EOS 1DX Mark II, so we have 4K on both cameras. We'll be comparing the new 5D Mark IV with the predecessor, the Canon EOS 5D Mark III. Have fun watching this review now in English, and if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. That's the box of the new Canon EOS 5D Mark IV, which will be placed in the loft in a few minutes for the next years. Canon provides some study guides in different languages. Of course you get a charger for the LPE6N battery with its 1865mAh. Fully charged allows for approximately 800 to 1000 photos. The tech Canon EOS 5D Mark IV carrying strap and the most important part, the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV body that feels really good in my hands with its outstanding build quality. Now let's get to the ports of the 5D Mark IV. Here in the front you can attach a remote, which you probably don't need because it features now Wi-Fi. Here you can attach a flash, here you have the microphone and the headphone jack. Vertical now, because on the 5D Mark III they were uh, horizontally situated. Here you have the USB 3.0 port and of course you have an HDMI port. Now to attach a headphone and a microphone you just need to screw this down and it works. While on the Mark III you have to put both up and here's your headphone jack and here's your microphone port. So that kind of sucks a little bit. So they improved it. And of course on the Mark III we have only a mini uh, USB port and it's a USB 2.0 while on the Mark IV we have now USB 3.0 as I said. Here you can see both models side by side. As you can see there is not that much of a difference. The symbols on the upper mode dial are stamped in on the Mark IV and just painted on at the Mark III. The Mark IV has now a quick AF field button near the display. I know that this question will appear, so I will answer it right away. Yes, boys and girls, you can block yourself using the 5D Mark IV. How? Without a flip screen? Easy! It features now Wi-Fi. Just download the Canon Camera Connect app for free from Apple and Google. After you have successfully connected your camera with your smartphone, you can see everything that the camera sees on the screen of your smartphone. To focus, just tap on the smartphone screen and the camera does the rest for you. Some more features are that you can switch between the photo and video mode, you can transfer the photos and videos onto your phone to send them right away via email or WhatsApp. There's a setup video available on my channel as well. For your next trip to the jungle or the Masai Mara you have now a great feature called GPS included. Ok, it's not new, but it's new for the 5D. You can use GPS in two different modes that will be explained before activation. You can choose between different intervals and be aware that it will damp your battery. The upper display is not new for a profi camera such as the 5D. It's being improved with every version that comes onto the market. A lot of information will be displayed here with background illumination. The 3.2 inch LC display features now touch as well. The touch function can be activated or deactivated in the camera menu. You can choose between four different color tones for your monitor. During playback you get the same features that you are used to from your smartphone. Swiping through your photos and videos and zooming with your fingers. One thing I was really impressed about was the focus speed during live view. The focus took under one second during daylight conditions to switch between the fore and the background. If you want you can tap to take a photo as well. 
There's a huge jump from the Mark III and its 22 megapixels now to over 30 megapixels on the 5D Mark IV. The resolution will give you some stunning details. You will see later in this video that the low light performance has improved a lot, in spite of the increased number of pixels. Shooting wide open gives you a nice blurry background with that full frame sensor inside the 5D. A lot of photos are available as download, the link is in the description below. All photos from this video were not edited in post. What a nice sound, that was the shutter of the EOS 5D Mark IV. You can now shoot up to 7 photos a second which is one more frame than on the Mark III. In live view you can shoot up to 4.3 photos and with the silent mode the shutter sound is being suppressed which is really nice for wedding photography. Of course the 5D is equipped with an integrated electronic leveling. So you can play flight simulator using your 5D. That's cool isn't it? If you want you can display the electronic level in the optical viewfinder as well. Let's go ahead with the autofocus. One word, stunning. You can choose between 61 AF points. And as you hit the shutter release button the camera sets the focus under one second. That worked in low light conditions pretty good as well and also depends on the lens that you're using. I did not have any problems catching a moment so the autofocus is reliable and perfect for the next wedding or walk on the street. And as I have shown you before the autofocus works great in live view as well. You can set the right exposure if you don't know how to do it in the viewfinder or over the upper display. Tap on the screen and there's your shot. The camera is extremely fast in focusing between the fore and background. I mean it does not take over a second which is quite good for a DSLR. There's this new focus button next to your screen. You can now easily select your focus type and field with your right thumb. Of course you can still use the MFN button near the shutter release button. But I found it more handy to select the focus with your right thumb because the button is easier to reach. AF tracking works as it should. Select your subject via your camera screen or from your smartphone screen and the camera tracks it. It sometimes appears to leak a little bit behind on really fast moving subjects, but that was an exception. The tracking works fine for most occasions that I tried out. Another feature that was added to the new 5D Mark IV is the dual pixel RAW type. These files are approximately 60 megabytes big. If your focus was not 100% set correctly, you can adjust it in post, but that works just to a minimum. I did not try it myself, but if you want to try it, feel free, this photo is available as a download. High dynamic range photos are not new for the 5D series. As you might know from the previous version, you can select the number of exposures and the camera sets these files together to your final HDR image. Now you can finally take your movies in 4K with up to 30 frames per second. Make sure you use a fast writing SD card for recording. Full HD recording is now possible with up to 60 frames per second and HD video recording with up to 120 frames per second. So I would say a great frame rate for slow motion videos if you shoot sport for instance. Don't wonder why your camera indicates a maximum frame rate of 50 frames per second. If this happens to you, switch to NTSC instead of Paul. The overall video quality is awesome. A high dynamic has now become a standard and the neutral color is great for post editing. From your screen you can adjust the audio level of your headphones, the microphone, choose a different resolution or color type. The 5D does not feature S-Lock. Frame grab is a brand new feature on new DSLR cameras. You can shoot a 4K video now with up to 30 frames per second. If you want, stop the video or go through it step by step. You may now grab a single frame with a resolution of 8 megapixel and save it as a JPEG photo. This does not work on Full HD videos or 720p footage. I recommend using a higher than normal shutter if you plan grabbing some frames. One option I really love about the 5D Mark IV is the integrated time-lapse feature. On my 5D Mark II I had to use an external remote to take a time-lapse and with the 5D Mark IV it's already included. I recommend using the manual mode for taking a time-lapse to set your exposure as you want to. You can choose between 1 and 99 shots or infinity. The only way you can use the time-lapse feature is to go into video mode. And I think the shutter is not being used for taking a time-lapse because I can't hear it. That's good. 
After the time lapse is finished, it will be available as a full HD video with 25 or 30 frames per second. As a little tip for you, you better switch to manual focus on your lens while taking a time lapse so not to have different focus areas on your final footage. We're here in the Willy James Bar, which is in Frankfurt City, uh, near the Hauptwache, it's called here, that's the place around here, uh, to test the low light performance of the new Canon EOS 5D Mark IV compared to its predecessor, the Canon EOS 5D Mark III. We expect a really good low light performance, so let's, let's prove that. For your information, left in the frame is the Canon EOS 5D Mark III, and the photos on the right were taken with the new Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. At the beginning, the difference is not really noticeable until we get to ISO 20,000. With the highest ISO of 102,000, you will notice the biggest difference, despite of the increased number of megapixels on the 5D Mark IV. The low light performance has improved a lot compared to its predecessor. The major benefits of this camera are the great low light performance, the full frame sensor, 4K video, 30 megapixels, dust and splash protection and a stunning build quality with Wi-Fi. The only disappointment is the price of about 4000 bucks. Thanks for your attention boys and girls, I really hope that you enjoyed watching this review. If you have any questions, go on the Canon website, I bet you find your answer there or leave me a comment below. All about the equipment I'm using will be found in the description below. The camera is available and in stock at GM Photo Frankfurt. If you want to test this camera in advance, go for it, we rent it here as well. Once you pass through Frankfurt and you want to clean up your sensor, we do this right away. Many photos are available for download, the link is in the description below. See you und auf Wiedersehen!